Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and that was a solo over a vamp, a band vamp, which is a common kind of soloing that you may find yourself doing if you're playing a fusion band, a rock band, an electric kind of situation. Very high energy. Uh, you saw that solo. I started out by just kind of catching the kicks dryly around the drums, and then I started using more and more cymbals till the end it became kind of a groove uh, solo and you know soloing in between that the bass line comes in halfway between now this is from a book by Steve Houghton and it's a great book it's called the drum set soloist I've been using it with students for years and years and it's got all kinds of solos in there it's got trading fours trading eights in the jazz realm it's got Latin stuff salsa stuff uh, so got a songo solo in there and it's got all kinds of vamps from relatively simple to really complex. So we're going to go over some of the more complex ones today. That one was uh, in 3-4. It was kind of a nanny go funk feel like this. And of course, that's definitely in the fusion kind of style. So heavy. It's not an acoustic jazz thing at all. All right, but of course, in an acoustic jazz setting, you could definitely find this kind of soloing where you're playing over a vamp. It's extremely common. So today, we're just going to talk about the techniques used to do that. And a lot of it depends on your vocabulary. In other words, how good your technique is, that, that matters when it comes to soloing, because that way you're not repeating yourself over and over. And that's the hardest thing to learn how to not do is keep playing your favorite licks over and over and to try to you know get beyond what you know and to do that you have to work on your technique so stickings are a huge part of doing that so you saw there I was using all kinds of double stickings parallel stickings singles I tried to mix it up as much for you as I could that wouldn't necessarily be the kind of exact solo I would play I was trying to kind of show you lots of different ways of playing and towards the end there you can get reckless, you know, you can take chances. It's your solo, do whatever you want to do. If you never take chances, it's going to be kind of a boring existence as a musician. All right, so let's talk about uh, building these kinds of vocabulary uh, techniques. The first thing that I'll do is I'll take these figures and I'll put them on the screen here so you can see them. Uh, they're pretty much spaced apart, but the tricky thing is they're on upbeats. And what I'll do is I'll play something simple with my foot, you know, maybe just a... So I'd recommend doing that first so you can internalize those figures. Memorize them. It's not that difficult. There's not that many of them. And then you could do different stickings. So you could try to play them around the drums. of a rudimental thing where I'm playing uh, most of the figures on the toms and I'm filling it with the, my snare drum. The next way to do it is to try to leave some space doing the same thing. So just rhythms that are not continuous. So that's the third way. Now, the next way is the hardest. That's where you start introducing your bass drum into the mix. In other words, filling in. And we're going to play you that with the, 
with the track, just a little of it. So I started kind of simple, again, playing those broken things on the drums, and then I started introducing my foot into the mix, and then playing some triplets, sixteenths, different note groupings. And that's the next thing we need to talk about. So not only can you play sixteenths like this, you can play triplets like this, and you could play double stickings for the triplets. So those kinds of things are really, really effective. Uh, lots and lots of jazz drummers like Max Roach, Philly Joe Jones use doubles all the time in their solos to create kind of motifs and impressive kinds of technical things. Now I've done lots and lots of videos, in fact my last three were on these kinds of triplet rhythms, starting from interpreting them and then all the way to playing them uh, in between your hands and your feet. And that's what I recommend doing for soloing. It's all about the vocabulary once again. Now, the other way to approach this is as a groove solo, where you're playing the groove, and then you're catching the figures within that. This is the most difficult way to do this. And as the bass line comes in, you want to do more of that kind of soloing. So we'll play you a little of that uh, right there. So again, working from the basic groove, not really basic, but you know, it's pretty busy anyway, and getting more and more reckless, and it gets more and more exciting, so more sound. And to do that, you saw there I was doing 30 second notes between the cymbal, it's an old Buddy Rich thing, and then also playing triplets. So different, different rhythmic groupings played between the hands and the feet. That sounds really big when you're soloing. It's kind of like the climax of the solo there. So you want to build it up from pretty simple to basically very reckless playing. Now there's so many great soloists today, can't even count them, but the ones that I grew up watching were Vinnie Caliuta, Steve Gadd, Dave Weckl, Steve Smith, Dennis Chambers, in this style. Billy Cobham, Simon Phillips, and of course there's lots of modern guys who play great, but those were the, I believe, besides Buddy Rich, obviously, and Gene Krupa, and the old jazz soloists, those were the fusion soloists that could do this so effectively, just build into just uh, crazy excitement and momentum. So I suggest that you listen to those guys, definitely. And they all play completely different. And, and like I said, there's so many soloists, everybody's going to have their favorite drum soloist. Now, soloing is difficult. Not everyone likes to do it. Uh, the jazz age is full of drummers like Dave Tuff and, and Denzel Best and certain guys that didn't like to solo ever. <laughs> they just wanted to keep time. Uh, and, and sometimes that was because they felt, I guess, maybe they didn't have the technique to do it 
or maybe they just didn't like it. They wanted to just, you know, stay in the back seat there, which is fine. But as a professional musician, you are going to be called upon to, to solo. I can pretty much guarantee you that. And I'm not crazy about drum solos either, uh, unless it's a really great player doing them, like some of the guys I just mentioned. But I've had to do, you know, hundreds of them. <laughs> okay, so you just got to learn the language and how to man manipulate through this. Now, the next video I'm going to post, I'm going to do some more complicated versions of these. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching and take care. Bye-bye.